I hear there's a lot of things going on at the same time, but hey, God is good. God is here for us, and uh, he, He's the one who gives us the strength, right? Amen. Amen. Today, uh, we're going to be on our third Sunday of the story of uh, King David. We're going to start on the third Domingo of the story of Rey David. And it says, uh, Man on the run. Hombre huyendo. This is the story of the Rey David, que va a ser el tercer domingo que vamos a estar hablando de él. It's the third Sunday. And uh, we leave everything in God's hands, right? Because he's the one who guides us. He's the one who gives us the strength and the wisdom, right? Amen. So let's uh, let's pray for our service. Heavenly Father, thank you for this precious moment, my Lord. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for having our pastor here today and our volunteers, brothers and sisters that came here to worship you, my Lord, and to seek you, Heavenly Father. Gracias, Señor Padre Santo, por este día, Señor. Gracias por un nuevo día de vida, Padre amado. Gracias por nuestro pastor, por los voluntarios y por todos los hermanos y hermanas que están hoy en día, Señor Padre Santo. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bless us and that you Holy Spirit be in each one of us. Pedimos, Señor, que nos bendigas y que tu Espíritu Santo permanezca en cada uno de nosotros, Padre bendito. Thank you, Lord. We ask that everything we do today comes with your seal of approval, Heavenly Father. Padre Santo, pedimos que todo lo que hagamos hoy en este día venga con sello de aprobación tuyo, Señor. In your name we pray. Amen. Our first song this morning says, I thank God. La primera canción esta mañana dice, gracias Dios. Amen. The second song says, what the Lord has done for me, I can't tell it all. La segunda canción nos va a ayudar a proclamar lo que ha hecho Dios por mí, no puedo contar todo. Amen. After we've sung these two songs, uh, Sergeant Major Teodoro is going to give us a chance to share our testimonies again. So think about what you could rejoice or thank God for this morning. We're going to sing about thanking God, but use this moment to ask God, what could I share with my brothers and sisters here this morning about what you're doing in my life? Usa en este momento para adorar a Dios y pedir a Dios, ayúdame a pensar en algo que puedo compartir con mi familia aquí en la iglesia. Pónganse de pie, I invite you to stand if you're able to, and we're going to sing I Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. 
sing this next one says what the Lord has done for me I can't tell it all I'm going to try to tell him today I want you to try to tell what he's done for you but we know we can't tell it all because he's done so much Dios ha hecho tanto que no se puede expresar todo pero vamos a intentar expresar algo verdad contar un testimonio esta mañana de lo que Dios ha hecho en nosotros Oh, 
beautiful songs, right? Let's all sit down. Bonitas alabanzas. But the first one I have that in mind says, uh, there's no more content. We're free. No hay más condenación. Somos libres. And when I was listening to that song, man, I remember, I don't know if you guys recall the story of, of this gentleman who was sitting at the door of the church, right, asking for money. Entonces, ¿cuál es la historia sobre este señor que estaba sentado en la puerta de la iglesia pidiendo dinero, verdad? Que no podía ni un walk. For he comes Peter and Paul, right? Viene Pedro y Pablo. And the first thing he, he asks money to them. And what Peter says? I don't have, I don't have money or gold. But what I got, I'll give it to you, right? And he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Amen, right? So what the first thing he, the man did? He got up, and the first thing he did is worship, dance. Thank the Lord for the blessing of walking again, right? So today, I want to, God wants to hear what he's been doing in your life. Because I'm thankful, even though... Well, I'm thankful for it because God has been working in my life personally. I know a couple of you guys know already I've been through a lot of pain in my bones and still haven't recovered all my full strength. But I thank God because they always specialists that will be helping you to continue on, right? And that, that's how it's God, God works like that with us. He's always there for us. We could be struggling, having a hard time, but He's there for us. Ustedes a Jonas, uh, algunos saben que yo estaba pasado por problemas de los huesos que no tengo la fuerza suficiente, pero Dios está ahí para mí, me ha dado la fuerza todavía y me doy gracias porque siempre hay un especialista que te va a ayudar a salir adelante. Así es Dios, Dios está con nosotros a pesar de pruebas difíciles que estemos pasando en nuestras vidas, Él está ahí presente, nomás tenemos que buscar de Él. So that's the same way, we seek for a specialist to help in our lives, right? So God is our specialist. He's our specialist. Él es nuestro especialista. God will heal us. But we got to trust in Him. we got to have faith in Him. Seek Him. Worship. And pray. Right? Because we all know that the prayer has power. La oración tiene poder. Pero para eso tenemos que buscar al Señor. Porque el Señor es nuestro sanador. Nuestro especialista. Él nos puede sanar de todo lo que nosotros le pidamos. Pero simplemente tenemos que tener fe. Confiar en Él, entregarnos a Él. Anybody want to share something with us? God's speaking, and He says He wants to hear from you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. God is so good. No tengan vergüenza. Hello, I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning and uh, helping my family go through some tragedy we went through. Uh, God has got it in his hands and we don't have any more tragedy. I just want to thank him every day. He done things good for me, blessing me, and I feel like a group soul in my life. Anybody else want to share something with us? I just want to say thanks, God, for giving me the opportunity to be here today. Uh, and because it's uh, working uh, so good in my life. I mean, we are not big troubles now. And, uh, even when we are living in a, uh, a hard, a hard uh, times because the pandemic and uh, uh, too many people they have no jobs so, or, uh, you know, passing through difficult situations. I, I got a lot, of, I, got a, I got a job and I'm, we are busy. Even today I have to go to work and I, and I, and I pray God that uh, um, don't rain early because I have to finish my job so I can be here. And thanks God I could finish my job so and, and I'm here. To, to worship them. Thanks, God. Amen. Yes. Eduardo? Buenas tardes, buenos días, ¿verdad? 
Yeah. Ah, Dios le doy gracias a Dios porque hay una, en, la, en la Biblia hay un milagro que Cristo hizo, una, el, sanó a un hombre que estaba ciego de nacimiento. Y cuando le preguntaron qué, qué pensaba de Jesús, él decía, yo no sé, no, no, no sé en realidad nada, pero lo que sé es que yo estaba ciego y ahora veo. Amén. Amén. Entonces yo le doy gracias a Dios porque ese también es mi testimonio. Um, no sé cómo Dios vino a mi vida, pero vino y ahora ya yo le conozco y, y me, me siento muy bendecido por eso. Amén. Y cada día en, este, este, aprendo en la, en la escritura que el, el plan de Dios para mí fue antes de la fundación del mundo y, y ahora me da la oportunidad de conocerlo más y más. Estábamos en, en nuestro estudio de hoy en la mañana, estábamos aprendiendo acerca de eso de que Dios tiene un propósito para uno, como hijo de Dios nos dan muchas bendiciones y nosotros tenemos que aprender todas esas cosas sí. y por eso les invito a todos los que hablan español a las 10 de la mañana tenemos ese estudio de 10 a la 11 Está, es bueno porque nos edifica, nos aprendemos más de lo que Dios tiene para nosotros el plan de Dios Amén. y por eso yo le doy gracias a él por eso sí. so I thank God for giving us the opportunity for, for me to be able to get to know him I was sharing with uh, the group about um, the story in the Bible where Jesus uh, 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 healed a blind man that was born blind. And, and that's my story too. Uh, I wasn't born blind, but I was born blind to the truth of God. And I don't know how it happened. All I know is that God came to my life and now I can see. Now I, 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 I experience his presence in my life. I know that he loves me, and I know that he has a purpose for me. I may not understand everything he does, but man, every day, I know that he's with me. Amen. You know, through, through all my struggles, like, you know, the Lord says, through the pain of the body, uh, I know that it hurts, but God is with us, so I praise him for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, buenos días, hermanos. Eh, yo les quiero dar testimonio. La semana pasada, el domingo, yo vine eh, con un fiebre en una rodilla porque me salió un, no sé, como una bola o algo así. Y doy gracias a Dios porque yo dije, Señor, tú me hiciste perfecta y yo quiero sanarme. Y el lunes yo me sobé mi, mi rodilla, me la sobé, me la sobé y la bolita esa se me introdujo dentro de mi rodilla. No sé qué pasó, pero se me confuso. Y doy gracias a Dios porque yo sé que Él me sanó. Amén. Amén. Entonces, gracias a Dios también por mis hermanos que están aquí, que Dios los cubra y los sane. Y queremos más niños aquí. Amén. Queremos un lugar para los niños también. Sí. Y también nos va a mandar un maestro o una maestra, pero tenemos que tener niños porque los niños son del Señor. Amén. 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 She was saying that uh, she's thankful with God because she had like a bump on her knee and she couldn't walk very good, but you know, she'd been loving it and rubbing it and finally she got rid of that bump and she thanked God for that. She also asked God that all the little children come to the church because, you know, they're the future. They're the future and, and this church needs also teachers to take care of the little kids. Amen. That will be in front of our prayers also. Uh, like our brother said, uh, we were blind, right? We were blind because the world, that's what it teaches us, to live in a blind world. But when you know God really, He opens your eyes. He shows you the real truth of this world. So He, through our Bible, He teaches us how to walk through this world, right? Sabemos que, como dice el hermano, fuimos ciegos. En un tiempo, cuando no conocíamos del Señor. ¿Por qué? Porque el mundo se ha, se ha, ha, se ha puesto a, a mentirnos, a cubrirnos esta vista y, no ve, y, y nos enseñan algo que realmente no es realidad. Pero cuando conocemos más del Señor, ¿qué es lo que vemos? Vemos realidad. Podemos entender que lo que el mundo nos está presentando no es la verdad, no es la realidad. Pero Dios nos presenta bajo su palabra la verdad en donde podemos caminar confiadamente, donde sabemos que si confiamos en su palabra, confiamos en el Señor y aceptamos al Señor en nuestras vidas, tendremos una vida victoriosa. Amén. 
God teaches us his word that if we walk with him, have faith in him, we will have a victory life in his name. Amen. Anybody else want to share something with us? Alguien más quiere compartir algo con nosotros en nuestra oración? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this precious moment, my Lord. Thank you because you've been hearing our testimonies. Thank you because you have responded to our prayers. Thank you, Lord, because you've been working in each one of us. God, we just surrender to you. We leave everything in your hands. Because without you, I cannot give a step forward. I cannot be a survivor. I cannot be safe. I cannot be free. Thank you, Lord, for your precious blood. Thank you for your salvation. And thank you for all your love. We pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Our third song then says, Open the eyes of my heart. That's what these testimonies have been about, that God opens our eyes to see him at work in our lives. And esta canción dice, Abre mis ojos, oh Cristo. Y estos son los testimonios que hemos escuchado. Como Dios nos abre los ojos para ver su obra en nuestra vida. We're going to sing this song together, Open the Eyes of My Heart. We'll come just a few at a time during the music to place our offering on the plate. 
And this is a time when the children as well can go and have a special lesson just for them. Este es un momento también más allá de las ofrendas. Los niños pueden ir a una actividad especialmente para ellos. How many believe that the, the Lord loves little children and wants to teach them in their hearts? ¿Cuántos creen que el Señor ama a los niñitos y quiere, quiere, Dios quiere que ellos aprendan más acerca de su amor? So we're thankful for our youth leaders that have put a lesson together for them. And while we have our Bible message here, they're going to learn a lesson as well. It's not just playtime. It's a way for them to learn about God. Ellos no van a ir nada más para jugar. Van a ir a aprender algo acerca del Señor. So you please worship God with your tithes and offerings. Ustedes pueden adorar al Señor con sus diezmos y ofrendas. Y los niños pueden salir para su actividad. And so the children can go with the youth leaders for their lesson.
Lessons, life lessons from King David. Estamos aprendiendo lecciones para la vida de la historia del Rey David. He's that one that went from being a little boy shepherd to being the king of Israel. Él fue cambiado de un niñito pastor allí en el campo con los borregos y las ovejas. Se convirtió en el Rey de Israel. And the scriptures tell us that he was a man after God's own heart. La escritura nos dice que David era alguien que agrada, que agradó, agradaba al corazón de Dios. I want you to follow along the scriptures. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 24. Primero de Samuel, capítulo 24. On the back table, if you don't have one, we've got the scripture lesson printed out, but you can follow along in your Bible. Allí en la mesa atrás, tenemos la lectura bíblica, o si tiene tu Biblia, se puede encontrar primero de Samuel 24. We're going to look at two different stories of things that happened in the life of David, and maybe we could apply some lessons in our own life. Beginning with verse 1, vamos a aprender cosas que podemos aplicar a nuestra propia vida. Versículo 1 de primero de Samuel 24. To set this up, we remember the last time we were together, we talked about David killed Goliath. Recuerda, la semana pasada hablamos de cómo David mató, venció, a, derrotó a Goliath, el gigante filisteo. Y lo que uh, sucedió luego era que David se convirtió en un hombre de guerra muy exitosa. What happened was after David defeated the Philistine giant Goliath, he became a great military leader, and he had a lot of victories. He had a lot of success on the battlefield. And people used to shout in the streets, it says, Saul, King Saul has killed his thousands. And when Saul heard that, that made him pretty happy. Saul has killed his thousands. En las calles de Jerusalén estaban gritando la gente, el rey Saúl ha matado los miles. But you know what they shouted next? But David has killed his tens of thousands. Pero David ha matado muchos más dos, docenas de, de miles. And then Saul didn't feel too great anymore. Y luego el rey Saúl no sintió muy bien escuchando la gente cantando las alabanzas a David por ser un guerrero tan fuerte. So Saul begins to plot how he can take out David. He doesn't want David as a threat to his power. Saúl se, se manifiesta un plan de cómo puede eliminar a David porque David es, representa una amenaza al reino de Saúl. So what does it say now, 1 Samuel 24? Ahora, ¿qué dice primero de Samuel, capítulo 24? So, tall, so Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines and he was told David is in the desert of En Gedi. 
So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men. Cuando Saúl regresó a perseguir a los filisteos, le informaron que David estaba en el desierto de Engadí. Entonces Saúl tomó consigo tres batallones de hombres escogidos de todo Israel y se fue en busca de David y de sus hombres. We ought to be fighting against the enemies of God and not against his servants. Debemos estar peleando contra los enemigos de Dios y no contra sus siervos. We're in a spiritual warfare. Right? The powers of the devil come against us to tempt us and try to trip us up. And that's our spiritual warfare. But here's Saul plotting against David, one of God's servants. Aquí tenemos a Saúl con un complot. ¿Cómo puede batallar contra David, un siervo de Dios, en vez de contra los enemigos de Dios? So we see David is an innocent man and he's fleeing for his life. Podemos ver a David, que es un hombre inocente, y él está huyendo del peligro. Verse 3. So Saul came to the sheep pens along the way, and a cave was there. And Saul went in to relieve himself, and David and his men were far back in the cave. Versículo 3. Por el camino llegó a un redil de ovejas, y como había una cueva en el lugar, entró Saúl allí para hacer sus necesidades. David estaba escondido en el fondo de la cueva con sus hombres. So, the thought that came to my mind was things happen in our lives in a surprising way. But God moves in mysterious ways. Lo que me ocurrió leyendo eso es que la, la forma en que suceden las cosas en la vida es sorprendente. Y Dios mueve de maneras misteriosas. So here's Saul, he's hunting after David, and he comes upon a cave, and he needs to relieve himself of all things, and he goes into the very cave where David is with his men. Out of all the caves in Israel, that's where Saul goes to find a, an outhouse, essentially, there in a cave. I, I, you couldn't make up a story like that. Who would ever believe it? That of, out of all of the caves, that's the one that David was in. Imagina que Saúl necesita hacer sus necesidades y entra a una cueva y de todas las cuevas de Israel, ¿cuál cueva entra? La cueva donde está David y sus amigos. Sorprendente, sorprendente, ¿verdad? Pero las obras de Dios, su manera de mover en nuestras vidas es misteriosa. All right, so here's David and his men in the cave in the back, in the dark, and they see up at the front of the cave, oh, there's King Saul coming in to do his business. The men, verse 4, versículo 4, the men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when he said to you, David, I'll give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. Y estos amigos de David dijeron, en verdad, David, hoy se cumple la promesa que te hizo el Señor cuando te dijo, yo pondré a tu enemigo en tus manos para que hagas con él lo mejor te parezca. We don't know when this word came to David, but somewhere along the line, a message had reached him from the prophet, from his own prayers, from his word, his, the Holy Spirit being in him. God saying, I'm going to put your enemy in your hand. Who would that be? More than likely the Philistines that were still battling against the people of Israel and trying to steal from them their crops and their wealth and their peace. That's the enemy. But David's friends are sowing this idea in his heart. Oh, look, it solves your enemy. He's the one that's after you. And now God has given him into your hand. Entonces, David, no sabemos cuándo recibió esas noticias de Dios que eventualmente su enemigo se va a estar en sus manos, pero yo estoy acuerdo con la idea de que el enemigo son los filisteos que están en contra de los caminos de Dios. No Saúl, pero los amigos de David lo sembraron la idea, este Saúl es tu enemigo. Y es ahora que está en tu mano, David, para matarlo. So what I want to urge you is to be cautious how you interpret the signs that you see. We can get all mixed up and run this direction and that direction if we're just going with the flow of whatever people say and, and tell us. 
Si nada más escuchamos lo que nos dice la gente, podemos cometer muchos errores y des, descariarnos mucho. Hay que tener mucho cuidado en la forma en que interpretamos las señales. Si sí, Dios nos da señales para conocer su voluntad y animarnos, seguir fieles, pero hay que tener mucho cuidado en cómo los interpretamos. We need to be cautious about how we interpret the signs. God gives us signs to encourage us in our spirit and to keep on with him, but we've got to be cautious and not just blow with the wind. Watch what David does. Continuing on the second part of verse 4. Continuando con la segunda parte del versículo 4. Mira lo que, dice, lo, lo que hace David. Then David crept up unnoticed and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. David se levantó y sin hacer ruido cortó el borde del manto de Saúl. I'm trying to picture this. Saul is there in the cave taking care of his business and quietly David is able to go up and cut off the corner of his robe. Estoy tratando de imaginar cómo es que Saúl está en la cueva haciendo sus necesidades y David, David se acerca muy silencioso y corta el borde de su manto. Imagine now how Saul is going to feel when he sees and recognizes that somebody has cut his robe while he's in that cave. He's going to be humiliated. He's going to be frightened. He's going to be anxious. El rey Saúl se va a frustrar, sentir mucho miedo y ansiedad cuando él se nota que alguien había cortado su manto. David could have slit his throat, but he didn't. He went up and cut the edge of his robe to let him know that he had been there. David pudiera haber cortado el cuello de Saúl, pero no lo hizo, porque reconoció que Saúl era el rey ungido por Jehová. David recognized that Saul at that time was the anointed king of Israel. And so what I'm seeing David do is he's practicing the showing of grace and mercy. No, yo puedo notar que David está demostrando la práctica de gracia y misericordia. This is the hallmark of someone who is a follower of God. Ese es el sello que demuestra la vida de una persona que sigue la voluntad de Dios. Demuestran gracia y misericordia. How does that line up with the way that you're living today? Are you able by God's grace? We know in our flesh what we want is vengeance. Sometimes when we suffer injustice like David did. But when we practice grace and mercy, God uses that in a powerful way to change people's hearts that are unjust. Dios tiene el poder de cambiar el corazón del injusto cuando nosotros demostramos gracia y misericordia inesperada, sorprendente, que ellos no anticipan recibir gracia y misericordia de nosotros, los que nos maltratan. Pero cuando lo hacemos, Dios lo usa poderosamente para cambiar vidas. So David has cut the robe. Now what does he do? Ahora David ha cortado la, el manto. ¿Qué hace ahora? Verse 5, versículo 5. Afterward, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of Saul's robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed. David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Pero a David le remordió la conciencia por lo que había hecho. Y les dijo a sus hombres, que el Señor me libre de, hacer, me libre de hacerle al rey lo que ustedes sugieren. No puedo alzar la mano contra él porque él es el ungido del Señor. David contuvo a sus hombres y no les permitió que atacaran a Saúl. Y Saúl salió de la cueva para, con, para proseguir su camino. It was David's conscience that spoke to him and said, making a fool of Saul, humbling him, humiliating him like that, God's anointed, that's an error. And so David repented of it. And he said, that wasn't right what I did and what you guys are suggesting to me isn't right. It was his conscience that spoke to him. And so what I want you to remember today as you go through this week, protect your conscience. 
Sometimes we ignore our conscience so much that we can't hardly hear it anymore. It gets fried, it gets burned, it gets scarred so deeply, and then we don't have it to guide us. We can't only listen to our conscience. We need more than our conscience, but our conscience is a tool that God gives us to tell us what's right and wrong. So protect your conscience, listen to your conscience. Nuestra conciencia es un regalo de Dios para orientarnos, para reconocer lo bueno y lo malo. Pero cuando no escuchamos nuestra conciencia, cuando la ignoramos, comienza, es, es como se quema. Y no funciona más y no lo podemos detectar y escuchar nuestra conciencia. Necesitamos más que la conciencia. Necesitamos la palabra de Dios, necesitamos el Espíritu Santo, pero Dios usa nuestra conciencia para orientarnos según lo que es bueno, lo que es bueno y lo que es malo. Protege tu conciencia porque Dios la usará para guiarte. All right, continuing on. We can go to the second page. Segunda página. Verse 8, versículo 8. So David went out of the cave and he called out to Saul, to Saul, My Lord the King. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down and prostrated himself with his face to the ground. He said to Saul, Why do you listen when men say, David is bent on harming you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord delivered you into my hands in the cave. Some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not lay my hand on my Lord because he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but did not kill you. See that there is nothing in my hand to indicate that I'm guilty of wrongdoing or rebellion. I have not wronged you. But you have hunted me down to take my life. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. Versículo 8. David lo siguió gritando, Majestad, Majestad. Saúl miró, miró hacia atrás y David, postrándose rostro en la tierra, se inclinó y le dijo, ¿Por qué hace caso su majestad, a los que dicen que yo quiero hacerle daño. Usted podrá ver con sus propios ojos que hoy mismo, en esta cueva, el Señor lo había entregado en mis manos. Mis hombres me incitaban a que lo matara, matara pero yo re, respeté su vida y dije, no puedo alzar la mano contra el rey porque él es el ungido del Señor. Padre miro. Padre mío, mire usted el borde de su manto que tengo a la mano. Yo corté este pedazo, pero a usted no lo maté. Reconozca que yo no intento hacerle mal ni traicionarlo. Usted, sin embargo, me persigue para quitarme la vida, aunque yo no le he hecho ningún agravio. Que el Señor juzgue entre nosotros dos y que el Señor me vengue de usted porque mi mano no se alzará contra usted. Incredible that this David could speak that boldly to the king, but he knew he was right. La audaz, la valentía de David hablar así al rey, pero con la convicción que él estaba justo. No había cometido pecado contra Saúl. So the lesson for us is to trust the Lord to be the ultimate judge and to fulfill justice for us at the, at, in his time. La lección para nosotros es confiar que el Señor será el juez supremo y él cumplirá la justicia para su momento. No según nuestro horario, sino según el horario de Dios. David showed he could have killed Saul, but he knew that wasn't right, and he was trusting. He said, let God be the judge, and may God show that I'm in the right. David podría haber matado a Saúl, pero él dijo, yo confío en el juez último, el juez supremo, que es Dios, y yo confío que él va a manifestar la justicia para mi vida en su tiempo. So the second lesson, very quickly, is a little bit shorter, and this was when, in, verse, in chapter 26, Saul and David are out in the battlefield. Capítulo 26, 26 concluye con la, segun, la segunda lección 
que es cuando Saúl y David estaban acampados en la, el campo de batalla. So we're going to look at verse 5 of 1 Samuel 26, versículo 5, primero de Samuel, capítulo 26. Then David set out and went to the place where Saul had camped. He saw where Saul and Abner, son of Ner, the commander of the army, had lain down. Saul was lying inside the camp with the army encamped around him. Versículo 5. Luego se dirigió al campamento de Saúl, hablando de David, y David observó el lugar donde dormían Saúl y Abner, el hijo de Ner, jefe del ejército. Saúl estaba dentro del campamento y el ejército lo rodeaba. So what I'm picturing here is Saul laying asleep in the battlefield with his army around him thinking he is perfectly safe. Saúl pensando, ha dormido allí en el campo de batalla con su ejército alrededor. Saúl dormido pensando que está seguro. But he wasn't safe. What we're about to see was that once again, David could have taken his life. His security, he thought, was in his army. But his army was asleep as well. We're going to see that they're all asleep around him. Vamos a observar como el ejército de Saúl también estaba dormido. Y Saúl no estaba protegido, no tenía seguridad con ese ejército, porque la verdadera seguridad solo se encuentra en el Señor. He's about to find out that true security is only found in the Lord. Verse 6, versículo 6. David then asked, Who will go down into the camp with me to Saul? I'll go with you, said Abishai. David entonces les preguntó, ¿Quién quiere venir conmigo al campamento de Saúl? Yo voy contigo, respondió Abisai. So imagine the courage of this Abishai, that when David said, who's going to go with me down? There's the army of Saul. What was it? 3,000 of the choice, most select soldiers across the country were with Saul. And David says, who's going to go with me? I don't know how long it took Abishai to say, I'll go. Maybe he had to think about it. Maybe he said it very tentatively. But I'm wondering if he said, I'll go. He believed in David's God. Remember that David killed Goliath. And he didn't say, look at me. He said, look at God. There's a God in Israel. Right? That was David's message last week about killing Goliath. <coughs> Ahora tenemos ese Abishai. No sabemos cuánto tiempo él duró en pensar. Voy a ir con David ahí al campamento de tres mil soldados escogidos y el rey Saúl. O si él con valentía dijo, yo confío en el Dios de David. Yo vi a cómo David mató a Goliat con una onda, ¿verdad? No con espada. Y es porque la batalla es del Señor. Y proclamó David, hay un Dios en Israel. So the lesson for us is we should be courageous to serve the Lord like we saw with David and his buddy Abishai. La lección es que debemos ser valientes para servir al Señor y no temerosos como ese Abisai fue con David, con valentía y con fe. Verse 7, versículo 7. So David and Abishai went to the army by night and there was Saul lying asleep in the camp with his spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner, remember he's the commander of the army, Abner and the soldiers were lying around him. David y Abisai, versículo 7, llegaron esa noche y vieron a Saúl dormido en medio del campamento con su lanza hinchada en la tierra a su cabecera. Abner y el ejército estaban acostados a su alrededor. These guys were asleep on the battlefield. Esos soldados estaban dormidos en el campo de batalla. When we're in battle, we should be alert. And as Christians, we should watch to see the battle is the Lord's and pray that he would give us the strength to have the victory that comes from him. Nosotros como cristianos debemos estar alertas y observar cómo Dios va a obrar y orar que él nos dé la gracia y la victoria para tener eh, victoria en la batalla. 
the opposite of what these soldiers and King Saul were doing asleep on the battlefield. The opposite is the lesson that we learn, to be alert and to watch and pray. El contrario, el opuesto del ejemplo de Saúl y su ejército, adormidos en el campo de batalla. Debemos estar, alert, estar alertas y observantes y orando. So verse 8, versículo 8. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered, has delivered your enemy into your hands. There's that same refrain again, right? Mm -hmm. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, The Lord himself will strike him. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now, get the spear and water jug that are near his head and let's go. Versículo 8. Hoy ha puesto Dios en tus manos a tu enemigo, le dijo a Abisai, a David. Otra vez el mismo refrán, ¿verdad? Dios ha puesto tu enemigo en tus manos, David. No lo mates, exclamó David. ¿Quién puede impunemente alzar la mano contra el ungido del Señor? Y añadió, tan cierto como el Señor vive, que él mismo lo herirá. En cuanto a mí, que el Señor me libre de asar la mano contra su ungido. Solo toma la lanza y el jarro de agua que están a su cabecera y vamos, vámonos de aquí. So trust in the Lord, not in our own selfish urges. That's the lesson. We got the selfish urge that we want to take things into our own hands and we want to cause the battle to go our way in our own way rather than trusting the Lord. But what did David do? He said, far be it from me to touch the Lord's anointed. Let God be the one. God will strike him down. Surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord will strike him down. But as for me, I will not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. ¿Qué dijo David? Tan cierto como el Señor vive, él mismo lo herirá a Saúl. En cuanto a mí, que el Señor me libre, libre de alzar la mano contra su ungido. Confía en el Señor no en los impulsos egoístas. We admit that we have those selfish impulses, but we don't want to trust in that. We want to trust in the Lord. Last page. La última página. <clears throat> Verse 13. Versículo 13. Then David crossed over to the other side and stood on top of the hill some distance away. He called out to the army and to Abner, Look around you. Where are the king's spear and the water jug that were near his head? Saul recognized David's voice and said, Is that your voice, David, my son? David replied, Yes, it is, my lord, the king. And he added, Why is my lord pursuing his servant? What have I done and what wrong am I guilty of? Now let my lord, the king, listen to his servant's words. If the Lord has incited you against me, then may he accept an offering. If, however, people have done it, May they be cursed before the Lord. Versículo 13. David cruzó al otro lado y se detuvo en la cumbre del monte, de modo que había una buena distancia entre ellos. Entonces llamó al ejército y a Abner, a ver, ¿dónde están la lanza del rey y el jarro de agua que estaban a su cabecera? Saúl, que reconoció la voz de David, dijo, David, hijo mío, pero si eres tú quien habla... Soy yo, mi señor y rey, respondió David. ¿Por qué persigue mi señor a este siervo suyo? ¿Qué le he hecho? ¿Qué delito he cometido? Le ruego a su majestad que escuche mis palabras. Si quien le mueve a usted en mi contra es el señor, una ofrenda bastará para aplacarlo. Pero si son los hombres, que el señor los maldiga. The lesson for us from David, trust the righteous judgments of the Lord and pursue peace. El ejemplo de David nos enseña, confía en los juicios justos del Señor y busca la paz. David was always, in this time of his life, he wasn't trying to take vengeance against Saul. He wasn't trying to take matters into his own hands, but he was trusting in God's timing and trusting in God's justice, and he was seeking peace. For us in our community and in our lives and in our families, trusting the righteous judgments of the Lord and be peacemakers. Pursue peace 
as far as it is able amongst us. Hay que buscar la paz en nuestra relación familiar, en nuestra comunidad y con el Señor y confiar que los juicios del Señor son justos. It's a lot to think about today. Hay mucho para pensar en el día de hoy. How we can follow this example and apply it to our lives. We're going to play a song. It talks about that God is the one who redeems us. And today, if, if you've thought about your own life and you recognized, I need to learn this lesson, I need to put it in practice, and I need God's help to do it, you could come to this place of prayer. Confess to God the ways you've gotten it wrong and say, God, forgive me and help me to do it right this week. Podemos en este momento de música y de reflexión y respuesta venir a este lugar de oración, confesar al Señor, lo he hecho mal, Señor, perdóname, y ayúdame esta semana, seguir tu ejemplo, seguir el ejemplo del Rey David para ser una persona que confía en tu juicio, Señor, y buscar la paz. We're going to play this song and I invite you to use this time for reflection and response. Vamos a tocar una música. Invitamos a ustedes a usar este momento de reflexión y respuesta a, a este momento de conclusión. The song is about the God of the redeemed, el Dios de los redimidos.
to you, God of the Redeemed. Praise the God of the Redeemed. Amen. Today is a United Salvation Army meeting. All the Salvation Armies from around Chicagoland are gathering together on the north side of the, the city of Chicago. I'm driving the van there. If anybody would like to leave with me, we'll probably leave about 1.30 uh, to get down there in time for the service, and I'll bring you back to Joliet in the afternoon. The theme is Together. Esta tarde, una reunión unida del Ejército de Salvación. Vienen de todas las iglesias, están reunidas. El tema es juntos, que estamos juntos en esta, en el reino de Dios. Eh, voy a manejar la camioneta de aquí a la una y media, nos vamos. Y si quieren ir conmigo, tengo lugar y regres yo, yo les regresaré aquí a Joliet después del servicio. Uh, please keep in prayer for Cadets Mario and Melissa Bledsoe. Uh, they're our special friends. They're going to be future Salvation Army officers. And we just found out this week that not only are they doing their field training here, Every other uh, every Wednesday and every other Sunday, but they're also going to be here for the whole Christmas season. They're going to be with us from Thanksgiving through Christmas, helping with the toy shop, helping with the uh, Christmas bell ringing, and they're going to learn so much, and they're going to be such a huge help to us. Nuestros cadetes son futuros oficiales en el ejército de salvación. Vienen todos los miércoles y cada quincena para un do un domingo. Pero acabamos de recibir noticias que ellos van a estar con nosotros toda la temporada navideña. Desde el Día de Acción de Gracias hasta la Navidad van a estar aquí sirviendo con el programa de juguetes y comida y con las campanitas y todo. We've registered over 400 families from the neighborhood for our Christmas program with a toys and a food basket. We give thanks for every one of those families and we're praying that we would be a blessing to them and that they would know how much God loves them. But we've got one more day of signups coming tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's the same day as our food distribution, so it's going to be a little crazy. If you've got any time off tomorrow because it's Columbus Day and you've got a day off and you want to come and help us, we would love it because we're going to register more families for Christmas. Hemos inscrito más que 400 familias para el programa navideño. Muchas gracias a todos los voluntarios que nos han ayudado. Ha sido un tremendo esfuerzo. Mañana, Día de la Raza, celebramos un día ferreado mañana y estamos aquí. También es la distribución de comida. Entonces va a ser un poco loco aquí, pero con la distribución de 10 de, 10 de la mañana hasta las 3 de la tarde vamos a estar inscribiendo a personas para el programa de Navidad. Wednesday, we're going to have our youth activities. They can come anytime after 3 o'clock. And there's going to be fun times for them. And at 7 o'clock, we've got our Bible study in English and in Spanish. El día miércoles a las 7, estudio bíblico en inglés y español. Desde las 3, a partir de las 3, los niños pueden venir para actividades juveniles. Typically, they arrive between 3 and 3.30. They get checked in. They have a snack. Then we do homework time. Our troop activities, they might be learning a thing about nature or different uh, things for their troop activity, like scouts. <laughs> then we'll have a, a light supper, a music class, and an arts and crafts class. And we'll also do a parents meeting at 6 o'clock as well. Tiene su horario semanal con clase de música, de artes, de muchas actividades, ayuda con sus tareas de la escuela. A las seis vamos a dar orientación a las nuevas familias. During the Christmas signups, I think we had seven or eight families who said, yeah, I'll come for youth activities too. And so we're thankful for that. And we're going to do orientation with them each Wednesday. Next weekend is our Intercultural Ministries Conference. I'm going to be here in the chapel with the monitors going. It's a virtual conference, so we're going to be transmitting it here. You can sign up online and watch it from home if you want to. Uh, but it's in English and in Spanish. La Conferencia Bilingüe acerca de ministerios interculturales. Yo voy a estar aquí en la capilla con las pantallas prendidas para la transmisión de la conferencia virtual. Pero se puede inscribir y... Mirar desde la casa si quiere, viernes. It's at 5.30, I think, uh, 5 to 6.30, the United Session on Friday. Then on Saturday, there's United Sessions and Workshops with lunch and dinner. And then on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, the final session. 
We're going to be here next Sunday at 10 o'clock uh, with adults and children for Sunday school. Vengan todos a las 10 el próximo domingo para la escuela dominical. On Sunday, October 31st, is coming up just in about three weeks. Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Then we'll have our service outside. Pray for good enough weather to do that. And the Salvation Army, did you know the Salvation Army has a food truck? They're coming with a food truck. It's going to be delicious chili and hot dog lunch with chips. And then the kids from the neighborhood are invited to come and get candy. From whom? From all of us. If we can decorate our car, put it in the parking lot, and then the kids can have their trunk or treat, they call it, and get some treats in a safe place, but also letting them know that God loves them. Octubre 31, Escuela Dominical a las 10, el culto de adoración afuera en el aire libre, y luego el ejército de salvación tiene un food truck que viene un camión con un almuerzo de chili y de un, dicen perros, cali perros calientes o salchichas, los dos. Y vamos a luego ornamentar, decorar nuestros carros para distribuir eh, chocolates y dulces, caramelos para Trunk or Treat. In January, the Women's Conference, I'm going to keep telling you about it, make sure you get registered, the Women's Conference. Uh, it's called Arise and Shine, A New Day. La Conferencia Femenina en Enero. And March 11 to 13, all the guys, we're going to go together downstate to um, Carlinville. And there's a men's conference called Momentum with fantastic speakers and great fellowship and fun. Mucha diversión, buen compañerismo y excelente enseñanza por los expositores eh, invitados para un, una conferencia de varones, 11 a 13 de marzo. All right, I'm going to ask if our Sergeant Major will come up and give us our closing prayer and our final blessing. Invito a, al Sargento Primero darnos la oración final. Gracias. Let's pray. Señor Padre Santísimo, damos gracias, Padre Amado, por tu palabra. Gracias, Señor, porque nos has enseñado de que tenemos que escuchar nuestra conciencia, Padre Santo. De que debemos de confiar en ti, Señor. De que no hay enemigo grande en el mundo porque tú estás con nosotros, Padre Santo. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you because you have teachers that you've got to trust in the conscience. That there's no big enemy in this world because you are in, in our lives. You are our protector, our savior. Tú eres nuestro protector y salvador. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my Lord. For our brothers and sisters who made it in today, and for those who couldn't make it in, we just ask that you still bless them, that your Holy Spirit guide them in every moment. Protect our little children from sc in school, wherever they go, because they are the future of this world. Pedimos, Señor, que tú sigas protegiendo los Padres Santos. Bendice a aquellas personas que no pudieron venir hoy a escuchar tu palabra. Derrama de tu Santo Espíritu a cada uno de ellos, Señor. Pedimos protección para nuestros hijos, para todos los niños, Señor. En la escuela, donde quiera que se encuentren, Señor, porque de ellos son el futuro de este mundo, Padre Santo. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And we ask that you give us the peace that not the world cannot give us, but only you. Señor, pedimos la paz que el mundo no puede darnos, pero solamente tú, Señor. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for, for answering our prayers. Señor, gracias por tus bendiciones y gracias por contestar las oraciones, Señor Padre. We pray everything in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah.
Being on board. Oh, I was a little nervous at 11.05, 11.10, we didn't have very many people, but I know, 11, 15, I, I was people. thinking that too. Yeah. So how many did you have with the kids? 